Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crashy and today we have a really interesting article coming out 18 hours ago on thegamer.com written by Eric Switzer. So Eric Switzer, much love to you my friend from Los Angeles. I uh, just found his Twitter so I could see the tweet that he posted with it. But we're going to take a look at this Pokemon Unite interview producing or producer Masaki Hoshino, which is our game producer. He's been the producer for Pokemon Unite since the beginning on matchmaking player feedback and the future. Now I'm going to leave the link to this article in the description. But I'm going to skip around a little bit as to not keep it too, too long and just kind of find um, some of the most like important parts. But uh, basically, Eric kind of outlines some really important things that I think are actually pretty accurate. And, um, you know, usually whenever you see articles like this on websites that I'm personally not super familiar with or just news articles, they kind of tend to miss the mark a little bit. They don't really always fully represent what the community is saying, but I actually think that Eric did a really good job on this. So it's like, if you follow Unite closely, there has been a notable lack of communication between the developers and the community throughout this first year. Unite has a handful of issues like, um, like any new game, but the biggest problem has always been the way that the player feedback has gone unacknowledged. The Unite community is a passionate group of players that wants to see the game grow and improve, but without any kind of consistent communication from the Pokemon company or Timmy Studios group, it's been hard to gauge whether or not the developers are even listening. The most we ever seem to get are rudimentary patch notes that sometimes conflict with uh, when you read them in different languages and almost always have to be supplemented by in-game testing. Unite has offered great ways to provide feedback via surveys, but there hasn't been any indication that feedback has been received. Now, I think that there, this is a little bit of an extreme. Um, like, we, we know they're getting the feedback. It's, it's just like, what do they do with it? And that's kind of in the issue. Um, it doesn't ever feel like they do much with it. So, I, I really like that Eric has kind of Put himself out there and say, "Hey, look, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask about this stuff." So, after speaking with producer Masaki Hoshino during a roundtable interview last weekend, I found a lot of assurance that the developers are in fact listening to feedback and planning to improve the game based on it. Um, though it may seem fruitless, those surveys and comments are reaching the developers. I asked Hoshino about all the biggest concerns of frequently requested features. Uh, none of, uh, none of it came as a surprise to him. And while he wasn't able to provide a lot of specifics about the kind of changes and improvements they're planning, the fact that representative that a representative for Unite is acknowledging the feedback at all is a big deal for the community. So I, I like that. So matchmaking. Really, really big one. Um, basically, ranked matchmaking. Matchmaking and ranked has been a point of contention with players from the very first season of Unite. Matching players far below your skill level is a constant source of frustration among players, which only seems to compound as you climb higher on the ladder. Unite's ranked mode favors progression and short queues. True. <laughs> True. So even players with a sub 50% win rate can eventually climb to the highest rank. True. You see what I mean about Eric, like, nailing... Uh, the, like he just nailed it, man. Ranked favors progression and short crews. It's it's true. It wants you to rank up and it wants you to have fast queues. And people with sub fifty percent win rate are climbing, and that is that is the issue. Uh, some changes to the matchmaking uh, were made at the end of last year. As a reward for climbing the ladder have improved in recent seasons, but solo and duo players are still experiencing frequent, if not constant, low quality matches. He he nails it. He he doesn't misrepresent this point at all. Like the matches are low quality. It's because of the the disparity in skill. He he understands how the matchmaking is favoring. Like, I, I really appreciate that he either did his research or he's actually a player himself because he knows what the hell he's talking about. So I asked Hoshino if the team was working on matchmaking improvements or if he felt like the system was working as intended. So, from Hoshino, we certainly recognize that there's room for improvement. Pretty cookie cutter uh, answer, but that's okay. We listen to the community feedback and there's a lot of feedback on matchmaking. So there's a lot of feedback on matchmaking, he said himself, so that's good. It's something that we continue to try to get more feedback on and want to improve upon. There are some things that we are considering that we're not ready to share yet, but it's something we definitely recognize as a problem that we're trying to fix. This is this is actually huge. Like saying like, oh, we get a lot of feedback from it. Um, we know there's room for improvement and like there's some things we're considering we aren't ready to share yet. Something we definitely recognize we're trying to fix. You know, we're, we recognize there's a problem we're trying to fix. So, I mean, that in and of itself is like, hey, look, we're going to get ranked in matchmaking changes. Like, we have to. They can't acknowledge it and not do anything about it because then I'm going to bring this article up later. So, um, really good. Uh, PTS is a, a small discussion where they talk about like whether or not they feel like it's successful. So I'll just read the quote through it. PTS is still relatively new and we're still trying to figure out how to util best utilize it. Um, the first time we used it was for Buzzwool. Something I try to keep in mind is when we introduce a new Pokemon, we don't mess up the entire balance of the game. I feel like the PTS succeeded with Buzzwool, so we'll continue to use the PTS to optimize the game. I like this. I wish there was a bit more of like recognition about a global PTS, like allowing you know a server for every region. It would be really, really nice. But yeah, ranked in competitive features. So 
I asked Hoshino about some of the most commonly requested features a lot of players would like to see Unite implement a pick and ban system for ranked and tournament play. Other MOBAs like League of Legends use pick and bans during character selection to add some additional strategy to team composition and prevent overpowered characters from dominating the format. In quotes. It's something we've definitely hear. Lushino says, it's something that is part of the consideration and something that we've been talking about as well. So listen, this is also good. It's the acknowledgement of things that the community is saying is so big. And this is why I constantly press for communication because it's not that we need an answer per se, but we just want the reassurance that what we're asking for is being considered or heard. And that's all this is. Like, he's saying we're talking about it. This doesn't mean it's coming to the game. It doesn't mean that it's ready to ship. It just means that they're talking about it. And and you know what? With interviews like this, sometimes they don't want to show their full hand. So, like, for example, September 2nd, Mew, Thea Sky Runes comes out. They could drop all of these changes on us. And maybe he just wasn't ready to talk about it yet. But that's not the point. Probably not going to happen, but it's something we definitely hear. It's something that is part of consideration and something that we've been talking about as well. Surrender is also a conventional, uh, controversial feature in Pokemon Unite. Though similar games will allow players to surrender when the match isn't going well, some players find it unnecessary for Unite, which is a much shorter match than other MOBAs. Dude, this Eric person, I love you. I love you, Eric. You have absolutely nailed your talking points. You've done your research and or you're just an obvious, obviously a Unite player. So um, to Eric... Very well done. <laughs> Very well done. I reward you with one Twitter follow. <laughs> Very well done. It's particularly frustrating when a team decides to surrender before the Zapdos fight because of, until the bird goes down, it's still anyone's game. We recognize, in quotes, we recognize that there is some negative negative feedback on the community towards that as well, so we're considering things. Perfect. Unite license and inflation. So he goes on to talk about um, the Sky Runes and how the... Unite license inflation up to 14k is kind of like a case by case basis. This part's a little sus to me, um, where he basically says they don't expect the cost to continually increase. It's really just a case by case basis for each Pokemon. Uh, Tyranitar just happens to be out of various considerations slightly higher. Now here's the thing: I, I genuinely think that it's just based on like popularity. It's not based on balance because balance can always change. And I think that we. I don't think that they could come out and say, hey, look, we really want to kind of pull some of the free to play currency back so we can make a little bit more money. But I do think that's the goal. So this is like a, a kind of a PR response, which I think is acceptable. I think this is acceptable. Tyranitar just happens to be at a various considerations, slightly higher price than other licenses, but it's not necessarily always going to increase, increase from here. This is very specifically a Tyranitar situation. So this last part's a little bit interesting because does this insinuate that the Unite license prices are going to come down or have we found our new baseline? Uh, I personally think we found a new baseline where we will most likely see licenses be priced between 12k and 14k um, so that way there's not as much free-to-play currency floating around but we'll see and, and I think regardless like this was a an acceptable response based on the probable goal which was to make more money that they don't want to like you don't want to say that out loud right you want to be like ah we want to make more money so um yeah so talk about the sky ruins a little bit um, and then he says you can read about the details here. It's probably a secondary article and then had to ask about the rest of the evolutions <laughs> So I personally want to see all evolutions uh, and all evolution team Hoshino says that's something we need to think about Yeah, so I mean come on now We're gonna get more evolutions for sure going into year two unsurprisingly the big focus for the second year Pokemon Unite is going to be competitive play Give in quotes given what we've seen at WCS um, And the competitive play here we want to do what we want to do is continue to improve on the competitive side and even improve in the events that we have There's certainly a lot we want to do there as we move forward so listen i think that this is great i think that this is um the communication that i just wish we had more intermittently without having to have um you know writers you know kind of like grilling them about it it's it's nice to hear that they hear us it's nice to to be heard and to to have that confidence so friends let me know what you think in the comment section down below i would love to hear it i think this is all good things I, I think that going into year two has given me more and more confidence consistently about the state of the game and about where the game is going i love competitive i love what you know the game has to offer and what the potential of this game is so as always drop a like on the video subscribe for future Pokemon content be sure to be kind of one tell someone you love them and i'll see you on the next video